Hello and welcome to this video. We're going to take a look at using voltage modular as an effect in Cubase. So this is essentially a pretty straightforward thing to do. So as you can see here, I've got a uh, track with a piano part I've just made up. It's fairly straightforward. Nothing particularly interesting there for reasons uh, that will become apparent later on. So it's just got a note every quarter note, nothing of any interest there. So what we're going to do is add an effects track as normal and voltage module actually appears under other. So that's, well, I guess that's why it's fairly sensible, but it's easy to lose it there. So you can obviously search for it using that and then you'll find it. I'm just going to call it voltage FX. And once you do that, you can see it gets created. So here it's taking up the whole screen pretty much. I'm just going to move that so you can see Cubase is still behind there. But I'm going to make this take up as much space as we can. The way that this works is the audio from Cubase comes here and then we can send audio back to Cubase here. So we're just going to set it up in a fairly basic way initially. Just going to close that. All that does is close it. You can open it up. It doesn't actually quit it as it would do normally. So I'm just going to send some audio from my piano part to voltage modular. And just turn that on for the moment. And then when we go back to voltage, we will see when I press play, you will see the audio appear here. So that's the first thing to check. Make sure that's happening. Once that is, and we can just process this audio inside voltage and then send it out. Now, obviously, or maybe not obviously, not all of these uh, just handle audio, but we're just going to deal with some simple things. So first things first, a nice simple delay. So just going to add a delay here. Take the audio from Cubase into the input. And then take the output back to Cubase. So from Cubase, from the host here, and then back to it here. Now there's a nice little thing here where if you only patch one of these, it sends it to both channels. So that's why it's got that M there, which is a nice touch because it says you're having to patch it to both straight away. So now if we play this, you'll hear the delay. Probably hear that a little more clearly if I turn it up. So let's just turn up the feedback so we hear it a little longer. So there you go, fairly fairly standard delay. At this point, you think, well, there's not much point in, in doing that. And certainly if you were going to just do this, there wouldn't be much to it. But you can effectively create your own multi-effect plugins by doing this kind of thing. So let's say we wanted a delay where we had different delay on the left and the right. So we could take our right audio there, send the output to R. Let's double that up to about 500. And then set the feedback to a similar amount. And now when we play this, you'll hear different amount in the right channel than the left. If you wanted to control these feedbacks together, you can just assign them to a performance controller. So by assigning them to the same one, as seen in a previous video. So now those are going to be controlled together, etc. We can add in something else as well. So I'm going to add in the uh, reverb. So there's a sort of spring reverb sound. So I'm trying to get a lo-fi kind of sound. So I'm going to patch that in left and right here. And then patch left and right out here. And now that's going to work like that. So what I'm going to do now is go back to Cubase. So we, we're, we're only going to hear this. Because I say I'm going for sort of a lo-fi tone. I'm going to put this on pre. So that's a pre-fader send now. And then I'm going to turn the fader down. So we're only going to hear the sound coming out of voltage from now on. So you're not going to hear that direct sound. So if we play that now. So you're just getting the, the sound from in voltage modular. So yeah, uh, we've now got this. You could, again, you could still patch that in Cubase pretty easily, just having things in series in uh, an effects channel. 
but these I quite like the sound of these. They're they're fairly lo-fi, uh, which is a, a useful addition to your effects arsenal. But we can add more still. So let's say you think oh, I'm going to put a filter on it as well. So let's grab a filter, and you can do these individually. So I'm going to patch one in as left with low pass, and then another one as right. So let's just take that cable from there, put it into there, patch that together. And again, cut off frequency, I'm going to assign to performance controller. So they're both on the same controller. And then now we can control those using that. So now we can make it even more Maybe dial in a bit of resonance as well. So let's just assign those. You wouldn't have to match these. You could have them different on different different channels, but I'm just... So you, you could still do this in Cubase, although they say the sound of these filters, I think, is a bit different. But what I'm going to add now... Uh, would not be straightforward. So what we're going to do is make this sync to Cubase and have a sequencer running. So, And then we're going to use this step sequencer to alter the, in this case, probably the cutoff frequency of the uh, filters. So the first thing we need is the sync divider. Okay, so I'm going to put a sync divider in here. So this takes the sync from Cubase. Now that's actually available here. Okay, so we've got sync out and this, this synchronizes the tempo between the two. So if we take sync out, put it into sync in here, I'm gonna put this on bar for the time being. So we'll see, this is actually running all the time. So if we change Cubase's tempo to 240, we can see that speeds up. And if we change it down, I'll change it to 60. You see that slows down. So we've got the ability to grab Cubase's tempo and then control elements in here. So we're going to control the, put that back to 120. We're going to control the speed of this step sequencer. So I'm going to put this step sequencer in. So the other bits are still active. They're just off to the right of the screen. I don't want to zoom out and lose too much space. But now that we're done with the library, I'm just gonna close the library so you can see that a bit better. So you can see we're still got all the rest, other parts of the patch in there. So what we wanna do is to control the step sequencer using the speed of Cubase. So you take the clock out here, and then that goes into the external clock control, and then you turn external clock on, otherwise it won't clock. And then you will see, once you press play on here, this will start to run. So you can see that's running, but it's while it's synchronized in terms of tempo to Cubase, it's not synced up in terms of beat one in Cubase being beat one here. So we, we've got a little more patching to do if you want to do that, but you might not want to do that. You might want to just have this free running. It's Sometimes it's quite nice to have things where they, they're not totally determinant and they sometimes they will just do slightly random things it can be a bit frustrating if it doesn't do the thing you want the the second time you use it but sometimes it's nice to do that and the way that i've come up to do this it's probably a little bit janky but it does seem to work is to use the transport control so we've got play so i'm going to click play to start so when you press play it starts i'm going to click stop there and connect that to stop so now when you hit stop After we've had play, when you hit stop, it works. It takes a couple of goes to, to sort itself out. But at the moment, so it's now stopping, but it's still not tied up to Cubase. So if I've gone back to the beginning, this is still on bar eight as far as it's concerned. So, And it's not synced up. And the way that I sort of fix that is by taking a malt from stop and putting that to reset. So again, it normally takes a couple of goes to sort itself out. So if we go back to the beginning, now you still need to start from a, a given bar for it to work because it doesn't know that you've reset it. But 
by pressing play, you'll see now, if I turn the click on it, it makes it a little clearer because the the part that I've got. So it's a little bit behind. But it's reasonably synchronised, so it's not it's certainly not perfect, but I've found it quite useful to do this. Yeah, so that's working like that at the moment. But it's, sometimes it takes a couple of goes to get itself together, which is a bit strange, but but perfectly usable. Now, we can then connect this up to controls such as, for instance, here. I'm going to connect this so that this step sequencer is going to control the cutoff frequency. So we're just going to take the output here. I'm going to turn output quantize off because I want these to be analog and as controllable as they can be so i'm just going to connect these to frequency mod one on both filters and then the mod amount here going to control that with a performance controller as well so both of them are going to be controlled the same amount so let's put it to about the 12 o'clock position and now by controlling these we can make the filter change as we play, I'm going to turn the click off so we hear it a little better. So you can hear that working. But when you do it, I'll do it a big one at the beginning. It's quite a big jump. You can hear it works instantly. So there's two ways to fix that quickly. Firstly, the voltage range. So if you put this on one volt, then these faders are sending out from zero to one volt rather than zero to five. So that fine tunes these. But another thing is the glide control here. So if you put it to about half a second, it's going to fade between these. So go back to the beginning. So that takes a little longer. So let's put it about half a second and now it will fade between them. So the glide control uh, controls that speed. Now here it's going probably to maximum straight away because this is taking that all the way up. So if we do it on one volt, you'll hear the effect much more. And if we put that on one second to go between the two, Yeah, you can hear that's made that much smoother. So that's going to be a much smoother waveform coming out of there. So this is just a quick look at what you can start doing with voltage modular. Most importantly, looking at the, the main aspects, which is patching things in and the fact that you can use these controllers here to control multiples, particularly when you're dealing with uh, stereo by having multiple processors that you can get your sync from Cubase and also use a sequencer, etc., to control elements automatically now the last thing that i want to look at in this video is automation now automation in voltage modular is pretty simple and straightforward so let's say we wanted to automate the cutoff frequency from cubase it's it's really easy so this would apply for any control i'm going to do it on these performance controls but it's the same for any control here so you just right click or two finger tap on a mac and then go to automation assign so we're going to assign this as controller number one and it asks us for a name. So because it says perform a knob two, I'm just going to call it cutoff. So there we have cutoff there, which is now named. We're going to go back into Cubase. I'm going to close this on voltage modular here on this track. Just going to get the automation lane up and then we can look through. Now it's shown voltage modular FX1, which is actually the controller we want. So if it wasn't number one, in case you're not sure, you can go to more, inserts, one which is voltage modular, and then you can see all of those. But we don't see the name, so we're just going to go for controller number one, but that's exactly the same as if we'd done it any other way. And now you just create automation data as normal, so you can see we've got the value from it, as we'd expect. Just going to ramp that down. And then if we go back and play, look at this controller here. You can see this slowly goes down because we've automated that. Obviously, this control of it is still happening so the two are now interacting but that's automation from voltage modular there that's 
all the basics that you need to get going with this. Now, clearly with the uh, nucleus version of Voltage Modular, the free one, then you only get a few effects in your library. But with the, the paid version, which is about a £30 upgrade, I think, if you look in the right places, uh, then there's a lot more you can do with it. There's some really, really complicated patches that you can start making up. But you can see, obviously, with this, you could build more uh, sequences, having different things controlled and so on. So while the basics, if you were just going to use it just for you know delay and reverb, while they sound okay, probably not much point. But as soon as you start doing this modular, MIDI controlled and generative kind of thing happening with multiple things interacting with each other, then clearly this is something that you can't do in Keybase and this is where Voltage Modular really comes into its own. So I hope you found that useful and you, you can start experimenting with this uh, in Keybase and I will see you again soon.